when I was supposed to practice an instrument, I was more interested in taking it apart to see how it works. And then, of course, I couldn't put it back together again. I think, you know, being really curious, you get sort of absent-minded of your surroundings to a certain, because you're so intent on whatever the task is at hand. I had a friend that was living in Lafayette Square at the time in 1972. And I did most of my hanging out in Lafayette Square because it was completely bombed out. You know, part of the reason why there were so many vacancies is because the city of St. Louis was to build Highway 44 right in the middle of Lafayette Square. And so a lot of um, houses were being torn down. And then a group of architects and students in the late 60s appealed to the city of St. Louis to move 44 further further south and they did. So even though it saved the neighborhood, the neighborhood was completely blighted by that point. So when I came back, I was living in Soulard in the firehouse in Soulard. And within like four or five months, um, a friend of mine, Bob Castley, had suggested a few houses to look at. And we were driving down this street one day in December and noticed it. And he says, how about that little house? And so we came up to it, and it turned out that there was a truck on the, the side of the property, and the people who had been living in the truck instead of the house, because uh, the house was totally uninhabitable. And uh, I decided to take a chance on it. The curiosity for me was that I became very resourceful. And of course, Bob Castley was very resourceful because he was the guy that recycled everything. So I realized, you know, pretty quick that there wasn't going to be a problem outfitting this house, even though it might look kind of ridiculous in some ways. We went to North St. Louis where they were tearing down lots and lots of buildings and we took all the windows out of this one house and then put them back in this house. Uh, there were furnaces, you know, we, we took wherever we could get uh, since they were tearing them down. There were a couple of records around, we paid the records for you know, a furnace for 12 bucks and, you know, just to haul it away, basically. And so, uh, you know, this, this house was more like a Frankenstein house for a long time because we cobbled bits and pieces of other houses just to make it habitable. What happened is that early on when I bought this house, I got the bug to date the house. And I learned, you know, pr pretty quickly within maybe uh, six or eight months that this house sits on a Spanish land grant. And the land grant goes back to 1768. And it turned out that there was a fur trader that owned this land back then and built houses on it because he, was, he had uh, a lot of cultivation. I couldn't tell, there was another Spanish land grant that started around Benton Place. But in the early years, I couldn't tell where those two land grants joined. I always thought that the one that was further east was this way more uh, towards my house. And that land grant belonged to a guy named James Mackay, who was Scottish. He was a surveyor and he was hired by the Spanish in 1792 to go to the Pacific Ocean and to draw a map of the Missouri River. And so when Lewis and Clark came through in 1803, he lent them that map. So the first 1,500 miles of their expedition was his map. So you see, I got it, that's curiosity. You know, curiosity all over the place. So, you know, all of these like little events basically wove my future life.